Circumference and the Great Knight of Angerland, a math adventure by Cindy Neuschwander, uh, illustrated by Wayne Gihan. Do what? More than anything, Radius wanted to be a knight. Every day he practiced riding, sword fighting, and archery. His teacher was the brave, old Sir Degrees. One day, Radius's parents, Sir Comforts, and Lady D of Ameter came to watch his lessons. Show us what you have learned, they said. In riding ring, Radius mounted his horse and Sir Degrees gave directions. Knightly right angle, trot, shouted Sir Degrees. Radius rode his horse at a trot to the center of the ring and made an exact right angle turn. It formed a perfect corner. Now double the right angle and to make a straight angle, called out Sir Degrees. Radius rode at a full gallop straight across the ring. He came to an abrupt stop right in front of his parents. Wonderful, they exclaimed. You have learned so much. At supper, Sir Degrees said, Radius is the best squire I've ever taught. He's ready to go on a quest. He's not old enough, said Sir Comfort, looking worried. Lady G smiled. You were the same age, dear, when you went on your first quest. Radius sat up straight up. I am ready, father, he said. Please let me go. Sir Comfort slowly looked at each of them. Finally, he smiled and nodded. Hurrah, shouted Radius. I will make you proud, but how shall I find someone in need of help? Our neighbor, King Lel, has disappeared, Sir Degrees answered. Many have set out to find him, but none has ever returned. I shall search until I succeed, promised Radius. The next morning, Radius made ready to go. Remember your knightly right angle, Radius, counseled Sir Degrees. It will serve you well. Sir Comforts and Lady Di gave Radius an old family heirloom, a medallion in the shape of a perfect circle. What are these numbers around the edge of the medallion? Radius asked. No one knows, Lady Di answered, but it may bring you courage on your journey. Radius bid them farewell and set off. I am on a quest, he exclaimed gleefully. Radius rode for many days throughout the countryside. One day he came upon a tiny village where all the cottages had rooftops pointed in steep angles. What a quaint little town, thought Radius. Mother would call it cute. He asked a villager about King Lal. His castle lies beyond the mountain of Obtuse, said the villager, pointing to the east. But take heed, there are tales of strange creatures and dangerous labyrinths. No one traveling there has ever returned. I hope to be the first, said Radius. Farewell, and thank you. Up and down through the mountains of Obtuse, Radius rode eastward. Finally, Radius came upon a walled castle, surrounded by a watery moat. He rode cautiously into the drawbridge. It creaked and groaned with every step. As he neared the middle, the drawbridge began to crumble. Quickly, Radius urged his horse across. Just as they reached the other side, the old drawbridge collapsed into the water with a tremendous splash. That was close, Radius exclaimed. He rode through the high gates of the castle. In the courtyard, Radius saw a parchment hanging on a door. He took the parchment and read the faded warning. Warning, stranger, friend, or foe. Dangers wait as forth you go. You must make a knightly right. Finding next, big, straight, and slight. One wrong turn means loss to all. In a writhing, screaming fall. Find the right to reach the king, or you will feel the dragon sting. The brothers zig and sting. What can this mean, thought Radius, clutching his medallion for courage. He rode through the doorway into a circular chamber. In the middle of the stone floor, Radius could see a carved circle with a line across the center. All around him, arches led to different rooms. Which way should I go? He wondered aloud. He read from the parchment. You must make a knightly right. Sir Degrees and I practiced many right-angle turns. Just then, something flopped out of the shadows and bumped his arm. Oof, grunted Radius as his medallion went flying. The medallion rolled away and came to a stop on the carved stone circle. Radius noticed that the number 90 pointed directly towards one of the arches. Starting at zero on my medallion, if I go to the center and then to the number 90, that forms a right angle. 
That's the knightly right, he cried. Radius swung himself back onto his horse and rode through the arch that was a knightly right, or ninety, on the medallion. The way was dark and damp. Around him, unseen things scuttled in the corners. By the light of a flickering candle, Radius read the parchment again, finding next big, straight, and slight. What is big, he wondered. Could it be something even larger than the knightly right angle? He thought for a moment. The mountains of obtuse were shaped like big angles, he remembered. As Radius looked around for a way out, spiderwebs caught in his hair, and tickling legs brushed against his face. Another one. Ahead, Radius saw several hallways. Each had a circle carved in front of it. If I hold the medallion over a circle, then the number measures the angle to the hallway, he said. The angle of the first hallway measured only 55 on the medallion. As Radius measured the angle of each hallway, he found only one that was bigger than a right angle. One angle measured 120 on the medallion. Radius entered that hallway, but it ended at a curving stairway. Radius dismounted and told his horse to wait. Stairs are no place for you, he said. Stay right here. I'll come back as soon as I can. The stairway down was narrow and steep. I must be under the castle by now, Radius thought. He noticed that the farther down he went, the hotter it was. The stairs came to an end at a fiery pit where huge flames leaped up like angry, snapping jaws. Two bridges spanned the inferno. They both started from the same spot, but they crossed the fire pit at different angles. After Big, the parchment reads straight, Radius remembered. That's 180 on my medallion. You can't get an angle straighter than that. He took a deep breath and ran across the bridge that went straight over the roaring fire. On the other side, Radius heaved a sigh of relief. He opened a heavy door and entered a dark tunnel. The door clanged shut behind him. Raspy snuffling came from deep in the darkness. Four glowing eyes appeared and began moving slowly toward him. Clutching his medallion, Radius hurtled down the tunnel. As he passed the eyes, he brushed against scales that felt like cold chainmail. Radius ran blindly on, stumbling as the floor started to slope upward. Behind him, heavy thumps echoed in the darkness. The tunnel ended. Other tunnels shot off at different angles. In front of each was a carved circle, glowing with its own light. The parchment says a slight angle, Radius mumbled, like the rooftops in that cute little village I passed through. A cute little angle's what I need, something less than 90 on the medallion. The smallest angle measured 40, so he turned there. The thumps grew louder, something snuffled and sniffed as if hunting for him. Radius ran through the darkness. Next will be the right to reach the king, another knightly right, angle of 90. At least the last angle will be easy, he gasped. He was wrong. In the dim light, he came across four corridors, which all seemed to be right angles. Fingers fumbling, he measured quickly with the medallion. 90, 90, 90, and 90 again. Slow down, Radius told himself, and measured once more. He carefully lined up the medallion and read the numbers. The first angle was 93. Too big, he said. The next angle was 85. Too small, he muttered. The third one was 89. Almost right, he said. Then there was a great whooshing sound and thick smoke filled the tunnel. Radius was caught inside a dark cloud. Coughing and sputtering, he felt his way along to the remaining corridor. I hope this is the one, he whispered. Thump, thump, thump. Something was lurching towards him. He stumbled. Suddenly, Radius ran into a wall of stone. He was trapped, but the thumping grew louder. Whatever it was, it was big, and it was right behind him. See? It's free. Radius turned around and stood with his back to the wall. His arm bumped into a latch, a handle. He pushed with all of his strength, and a door swung open. Brilliant sunshine met his eyes. Welcome, a voice bellowed. Who might you be? Radius squinted into the brightness. I am Radius, son of Circumference and Lady Di of Amateur. And squire to Sir Degrees, I am searching for King Lau. It seems you have found him, chuckled the king. But how did you do it? Radius bowed. My medallion helped me figure out which paths to take. Knowledge gave me the courage to keep going, he explained. But there were frightful things in there. A whimpering came from behind the door. King Lau opened it wider. 
Radius jumped back. Dragons! He gulped. A pair of them! They are my loyal pets, the Lowell Dragons, explained the king. He scratched their heads. The poor beasts and I were trapped in the maze by my evil cousins Zig and Zag. But we are free now that you have found the way through the labyrinth. Young squire, he continued. Anyone brave enough and smart enough to figure out that maze deserves his knighthood. With Radius's medallion, they easily found their way back through the maze to celebrate King Lel's freedom. Invitations were sent to all the neighboring knights and ladies, Circumference, Lady Di of Amida, and even old Sir Degrees came. Radius and King Lel went to the moat to greet each group of guests. When King Lel whistled and called out, Pair of Lels, the two dragons stretched across the moat, side by side. They became a living drawbridge for the guests to cross. Everyone asked Radius how he found his way through the maze. I discovered the secrets of the medallion, Radius said. The numbers divide a circle into 360 parts. I can use those parts to measure any angle. I call the parts of a circle degrees in honor of my teacher, Sir Degrees. Radius drew a picture of his medallion and took an arrow from his quiver. Let's say this arrow points to a hallway. The number shows how many degrees are in the angle. A right angle measures 90 degrees. A straight line measures 180 degrees. I call angles bigger than 90 degrees, obtuse, after the mountains of obtuse. Angles smaller than 90, I call acute. They look like the roofs in a small village I traveled through. King Lel told Radius to kneel. For your bravery and intelligence, I knight you, Sir Radius, the king proclaimed. From day this day forth, let this kingdom be called Angleland. Banners will fly on every castle tower. They shall show knightly right angles of 90 degrees, small acute angles and large obtuse angles, and straight angles of 180 degrees. Rise now, great knight of Angleland! The crowd cheered and Radius rose to greet them. Angleland was the only kingdom to have a castle with a living drawbridge. The cry, Pair of Lels, brought the two dragons over the moat. They became so famous that today, parallel means any straight line side by side, the same distance apart, like the Lel dragons. Angleland is still there on very old maps, but today we call it England.